What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Real Dirty Reviews. Today we're talking about the JK Armament Solvent Trap. If you don't know what a solvent trap is, go ahead and contact JK Armament or Google it. In my opinion, the benefit of going ahead and creating your own suppressor from a solvent trap is that you're not waiting between nine and 15 months to get your stamp back on a manufacturer suppressor. Um, I've heard wait times anywhere from six months to 15 months. This, between buying it, it took about 22 days to receive the tax stamp back on it. So when I received my solvent trap, I went ahead and I followed ATF guidelines and I form one it, serialized it, and then I converted it to a suppressor. And as a disclaimer, Callahan does not recommend that you do any kind of modification to your solvent trap until you receive an approved form one. All right guys, as a rule of thumb and a great safety check, always check for alignment on any suppressor, whether it's factory purchased or one that you've done yourself after an approved Form 1. One of the ways to do it is an alignment rod through the suppressor once it's mounted onto the host firearm. That way you can check alignment between the bore and the suppressor to check for concentricity the whole way through. Also, make sure to take out your BCG and any other parts that are in the way that obstruct a view of the bore or obstruct the bore alignment rod, all right? Always keep it safe. All right guys, we got the can on. We're running a full eight baffle uh, configuration. Just a heads up, make sure you check your zero before and after you run the suppressor because it may change between gun to gun, ammo to ammo, can to can. There is variables that present themselves and you could throw your zero. All right, so we're gonna start with, with all eight baffles. As we go on, I'm gonna be removing two baffles at a time and we're gonna see if that changes the sound. Pretty good. Sounds good. How does it sound? Pretty quiet, huh? Clean cap, no strikes. Same thing taken off from the front, no strikes. You're starting to see a little bit more carbon as you go farther back on the baffles. For the sub gun, you're mainly gonna see that beach sand type of crap on there. And if you want it to clean them, it's gonna be a lot easier. Make sure all baffles and end cap and everything else are tightened up before you shoot. So I was wearing, I was wearing hearing protection, obviously while I was shooting. So it's, it's very difficult to hear, you know, the, the very fine drops in, in noise or increases, but I didn't hear that much of a change as we reduced the baffles. Again, you're starting to see more and more carbon deposited on the baffles, the farther back you go. But being how it's pistol propellant, it's off pretty easy. You're starting to see a little bit of the carbon baking right there. This would be baffle number four. All right, so far so good. I just ran one 24 grain white box through the two baffle configuration. Now we went ahead and threw some Fancy Brass Company subs in here, and we're gonna see how quiet it gets. Wow. Bro, that's impressive. All right guys, final thoughts on this um, JK Armament suppressor. I'm really impressed with it. This is a two baffle configuration. We ran some, some subs through it, and it sounded really quiet. There wasn't too much blowback. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't. How would I run this configuration given that we saw the performance from eight baffles to two baffles? I'm thinking I'm gonna be right around the three to four baffle area or range, and I'm gonna run subs through this gun the entire time. Um, when I built this suppressor, I only had the intent of running it on this AK-9. 
So if you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Wow, bro, that's awesome.